Hey everyone, this is Adam Ellis, and in today's lesson, I'm going to teach you how to make a professional sounding trance percussion section. Okay, so we're in Logic, and the first thing I'd like to do is I like to get my kick peaking at minus eight. This is how I settle my tracks. I get the pick, kick, pick, no, pick. I get the kick peaking at minus eight, and I make sure the master is set to minus five. So to get this done correctly, go to the master, turn off the limiter. Put your master bus to 0.0. Check the kick. You can see it's peaking at minus eight. So I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the limiter back on, turn my master down to minus five, and I make my tracks with this setup. When I'm mixing the tracks down, I'll turn the, the limiter off. And as long as I've got minus three decibels of headroom, I know that I've mixed my track cor correctly. With this setup, if I lose more than minus three decibels of headroom, then I know there's a there's an issue in a mix. So it's a predetermined way to basically ensure your mix down is perfect. Again, just my way of doing it. Anyway, so over the years, I've used many different methods of uh, percussion. I've used just MIDI, where I'll use samplers and then drag samples from audio packs and whatnot. Then I just use loops. I went through a phase of getting templates online and taking the full percussion section, importing it into my track, and then just maybe changing a couple of the sounds to make it my own. Nowadays, I do a bit of a variation. I no longer use people's templates or anything like that. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but Loop Cloud has been a game changer for me as, as well as a noise gate. So I use a combination of Loop Cloud with noise gate for all my audio. And then I'm going to put in the close tight and the 16th in MIDI because I just like to, put, to control it like that. So nowadays, what I like to do is I like to have my claps included in my groove bus. I used to have it where my percussion and my clap was separate, but I come to realize after many years, I was doing multiple automation. So I was automating the percussion out as well as the clap, and it takes ages. And I figured there's actually no benefit to having a clap on a different channel. It's just easier to create a groove section, and in that groove section, there is a clap. So uh, we'll head on to that last. Anyway, MIDI, we've got Loop Cloud open. Fantastic tool, honestly. It's so bloody good. And we're going to go to library, samples. Daypox and Essentials 2. These are just really good loops. You can use any loops, especially with the noise gate I'm going to show you. It's, it's worked so well. So drum loops. And what we're looking for, I always keep them random like this, because if you put it like this, you tend to find that you just use the first couple of samples and you, you're going to use all the same samples in your track. So if you just put it like this, Okay, so we're ready to start making our low middle loop and we're gonna just look at Loop Cloud and I have Daypox and Essentials 2. I've got Loop Cloud connected to Logic. So when I press play in Logic, it's gonna play it in time and then run it through my channel. So it's a great way of working. Um, Logic doesn't play samples in time, so it's a real pain in the arse. If you're using live, then that's great. You don't need to use Loop Cloud because it does it in time. But um, I'll be honest with you, this has actually got a benefit even if you are using live because in acid samples and mid-bass samples, you can change the key. So it's a brilliant feature. Anyway, we're looking for a loop that's got low mid frequencies. Um, again, this isn't gospel. I always say this is just my way of doing it. But we're looking for frequencies around here. What we don't want is, a, is a, a sound that's got no frequencies below 500 hertz. The whole point right now is we're filling out with that low mid frequency. We want the track to sound full. And um, this is just my way of doing it. And when you apply this logic to, um, no pun intended, to your percussion, your atmospheres, your acids, you're going to get a much fuller track. So um, let's have a listen. So that was no good, right? Because it's got no low, low mids. That one is absolutely perfect. So let's compress it. Just a little bit. We'll put it across the stereo field. We don't need a, del a delay. We don't need to take any of the low end away, I don't think. But what we can do is add a noise gate, and this is going to clean it up significantly. I am going to add a delay actually as, a, as an effects kind of delay. And this is a great uh, tool, Only Boys number one.
fantastic we've got that we can now just uh copy these settings because you're basically doing it on the midi but we need to put it in as audio so we're going to copy the channel ship settings and simply paste them to this channel and then when we pull the audio here Perfect. right now we're looking for a, a mid kind of loop so we'll take off the noise gate for now we'll take off omniboys and we'll put wide into like 60 is just a starting point straight away it just works so well so we can duplicate that we'll call this low we'll call this one hi and this is how fast and easy it can be Obviously, it took me a long time to get to this. Don't be under any illusion. So we can get rid of noise uh, loop cloud now for, for the time being. Perfect, so we're on a roll. Right, let's add a clap now. So for this one. Look at the samples. Uh, Dave, 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 look, these Dave Parkinson samples are just so damn good. I do like to layer my claps. I like a clap, a hand clap, and a tss, more like a snary kind of clap. So that we did the hand clap kind of thing. A little fade out. I don't even think we need a, a lower clap on this one. Sometimes you do. I'm going to roll with it. I'm not going to do things for the sake of doing it. So let's add some um, percussion. So we'll just go for the closed hat. So these closed hats, I always remember an interview with Armin Van Buren many years ago, and he said these closed hats need to be high, and he recommended doing a boost around 12k. So it's going to go for three, three decibels at 12k. I want it to be higher. How is that going to happen? With the sound. Different close hats are going to work with different elements in a different way. We've got these loops, and I actually had to re record this damn tutorial because it didn't work properly. And I'm creating a completely new groove from scratch. And if I'd have tried to use the same open close hat as before, it wouldn't work, right? 
Sixteenths, I'm going to teach you a really cool trick now. But if anyone else does this, I kind of feel like I'm going to take, I'm going to take pride in inventing it. <laughs> this is just my way of doing it. I like the first note to be about 80. Second note to be about 100. The third note to turn all the way down because we've got a closed hat, right? So we don't need to clash. And then the, the top note can be 110, something like that. And again, this is really hard to get right, this sound. I find it's hard anyway. A nice sound but it's too similar to the closed hat so we can't hear the closed hat now what we will do as well is pan this left 10 percent and pan the closed hat right 16 right 10 percent as well Very difficult in a minute. I've got an ear infection and I can't fucking hear out my left ear, so I'm really struggling. We got there in the end. You want to make sure when you mute each section that you can hear it disappear. Awesome. So the last sound now is just um, an open hat. So again, like I said, I like to do my open hats using samples. I just find that they just sound better than the ones in sample packs because whoever's made this sample, in this case Dave Parkinson, he will have made the um, the open heart loop and then he will have processed it. So it saves me doing the process and again, work smarter, not harder. Let's see if... Um, a client actually told me that you don't need to chop everything out. You can just use a noise gate to um, isolate the open hat. You know, I always like learning. I've got no issue with my clients giving me tips. That's Eugene, actually, a great guy. Um, but let's have a look if it does work. It might work for him. Just because it doesn't work for me doesn't mean it didn't work for his sound. There are some artifacts in that. But are you going to hear them? There's only one way to find out. You notice that the... Uh open hat is in the same location as a closed hat that's because you want to build up the sound so you use your closed hat to start with and then your open hat later
to be fair, I can't hear a difference, so we're going to roll with it. Why not, eh? One thing I do like to do, though, is I like to put on the SSL EQ. Um, it's, um, I'm using a hi-hat setting, okay? I've already saved it as the, as the default hi-hat. We're going into the red, but we still need the volume. So this is exactly the way you would use a limiter. People will say, hey, Adam, how do you use a limiter? A limiter for me is just a, it's a tool to keep a lid on things. I like to imagine it that you're walking down the street with a bucket of water and a bucket of water is, you know, three quarters full. And there's a good chance you're probably not going to spill any water. But if you trip and fall over, it's great to have a lid on there, right? Just in case. That's how I view a limiter, um, you know. So you'll see all my bus channels have a limiter on there because just in case. In this case, it's like you're walking down the street and water is coming out of the bucket, so you definitely need a lid. And what it's going to do is it's allow, going to allow us to get the volume we need without going into the red. The, the way it works is it basically balances out, balances out the sound. It does the opposite of a compressor. A compressor takes the high parts and brings them down to the low parts. A limiter brings the low parts up to the high parts. I wouldn't worry too much about the technical aspect. I know fuck all about fucking anything with production. I've just winged it. You know, I'm the definition of make it till you fake it till you make it. But it works for me. You know, I don't need to know all the technical aspects of how things work properly. I make great music um, using simple tools and uh, with basic understanding of things. And I think it's really nice to kind of push it onto you guys and say, hey, you don't need to be some kind of whiz kid, some technical genius to make great tracks. And there you go, we've got ourselves a fully professional trance groove. Let's just quickly do a little bit of a... Have a bit of fun with it. So, we'll uh, put a sampler on. So this is how I would typically build up a, a track, okay? Okay, so there you go. So that's how you do a professional sounding trans percussion section with the use of a noise gate, a bit of compression, um, some audio and some MIDI, maybe a bit of stereo imaging and a bit of panning left and right. It isn't overly complicated. What's hard is as a beginner, your ears are not conditioned enough to understand what sounds right and how it sounds right. And over time, it will get better. Stick with it, be consistent, trust the process. Follow one guide, you know, there's no point in taking, it's like, it's like trying to make a great recipe when you're using six people's different recipes, like a little bit from this one, a bit from that one, it's never going to work in it. Find a recipe that's tried and trusted and keep practicing. This is my method. I use my 10-step method. It's a, it's a development course that I, that I 
developed over the years and i use 10 simple methods 10 simple steps to make a trance track if you'd like to know more about, about that and my one-to-one -one lessons as always you can drop me an email tutorials at animusdj.com um but yeah it's a really simple process when you look at it like this and just take your time have fun if you're not sure you want some advice you can drop me a line tutorials at animusdj.com no agenda i'm happy to help out genuinely you can ask people in, in, who have reached out in a past you know don't try and sell your things or anything like that. I'm happy to help. If it wasn't for people like me when I was growing up helping, I wouldn't be where I am now. And I see a lot of value in that. And I take a lot of pride in, in giving back to the community. Uh, other than that, um, trying to think what else. Drum roll, please, for the uh, the, the winner. As you, as you know, we always give away a free tutorial. We've had some really good tutorials with you guys. It's great to engage with this community. And the winner this week is Transhead. Trans head, really cool name. I, I pictured, to be honest with you, just because of her name, I always, I always consider myself a trans head, so that resonated with me. If you would like to win a, a free tutorial where we could go over your tracks, you can ask me about the scene, you can ask me about where I got to where I am, you can talk about anything, really, within reason, obviously. Um, but yeah, if you would like to be in with a chance of winning that, just drop a creative comment, or like the video, just something that's going to catch my eye, and uh, yeah, other than that, uh, as I said, uh, if you've got any questions about the tutorials, if you've got any requests, or if you want to know about my one-to-one -one lessons, where I'll help you get to a professional level, uh, drop me a line, tutorials at adamalistdj.com. I think it'll be there. <laughs> I always forget. But until next time, see you later.